now yeah. it is yeah, there. Yeah, it shows recording. Oh, okay, very nice. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-ameen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope everybody had a good week and looking forward to the weekend, inshallah. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and declaring that there is nothing in existence that is worthy of our worship, our love, our fear, our hope, our unconditional obedience, except for the one and only creator of the heavens and the earth, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness and we testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger and his perfect worshipper. Alhamdulillah, we began our discussion of Surah in Shiqaq last class, and we progressed up until which ayah, who remembers? Yes, Ahmad. Ayah number five. Excellent. Alhamdulillah. So today we'll continue from ayah number six. I urge all of you to take out your cell phones uh, and uh, pull up your Quran app, uh, whichever app that you have, and the translation, and we're going to go on it together. And uh, I also urge all of you to keep away from any distractions on the phone, checking your notifications, social media feeds, your Twitter, WhatsApp, uh, Snapchat, and Instagram, whatever it is. Make sure that you put all of that away. And our class will run only for uh, around 20, 25 minutes, inshallah. All right, so ayah number five, or ayah number six. We learned in the first few ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about some of the events that will happen on Judgment Day, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses and tells us in very vivid details what's going to happen, how the skies are going to tear apart. And who remembers what did we mention about the sama, the skies or the heavens tearing apart? What was special about that discussion? Who remembers? The skies ripped apart? Yes. Yeah. What did we say? Does it mean the sky alone? <coughs> or does it mean something beyond that? Something beyond Sorry. that. Okay, good. So when we say a sama, sama in Arabic doesn't just mean the sky, this canopy, this blue color, this atmosphere that we see above us. Okay, sama means something more than that. Sama means even all of the heavenly bodies, all the celestial bodies, all the planets, all the galaxies that you see trillions of light years away. All of that is included in the word sama. Okay, so something for you to keep in mind. As we went ahead, we talked about in ayah number five, wa adinat li rabbiha. Uh -huh. What did we say about wahuqat or this ayah? It's meant to happen. It's, it's destined to happen. Very good. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the earth has responded to the commandment of its Lord, of its creator, of its maker, right? It is as though Allah is saying it is its right to do so. <clears throat> this earth that we have on which we walk and we take for granted, we take our own lives for granted, right? We think that I've got all of these amazing ambitions ahead of me and all of these dreams. I'm going to have, you know, five Lambos and six Ferraris and I'll have the biggest mansion in all of the GTA and things of that nature. Great, you have all of these dreams, but when is it going to suddenly come to a halt? None of us knows. SubhanAllah. So Allah Azza wa Jal is saying this earth that you're standing on, this earth that you're walking on, this earth that brings forth all of its shrub, shrubs and all of its crops and food products for you, this earth, it is as though that it's waiting to fulfill its destiny and that is that it's gonna experience tremors like it has never experienced before. That it will all come to an end, that it will be flattened up that it will be destroyed completely and it is waiting to do so, okay? This is the implication that we get from this particular ayah. And then when will this happen? We tie it in to the previous surah. 
And the previous surah in this context is surah number 82, surah Infitar, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alimat nafsum ma qaddamat wa akharat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats this several times in surah Infitar, that every single soul, you and I, every one of us, is gonna come to realize, is gonna come to know what it has brought forward and what it left behind. Alimat nafsum ma qaddamat, taqaddam, taqdeem means forward and the takhir means something that is behind you in other words all of the material wealth that you left behind the, your possessions whatever you had of money of <coughs> clothes of you name it all that is left is left behind and what is coming forward is today right now did i wake up for fajr this morning did i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did i do what Allah commanded me to do? Did I live my life according to the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah? Every single day, you and I are being graded. Every second that is passing by, you and I are submitting our deeds in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? The angels that we have, that you learned in Sunday school, that you learned from your mom and dad when you were little, that you've got angels on your shoulders, that these angels are writing down every single thing in, thing. in Surah 50, Surah Qaf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيبٌ That there's not a single word that you utter. مَا يَلْفِذُ يَلْفِذُ from لَفْذ And لَفْذ means not even a word or a phrase. In some uh, tafsir, the scholars say, it even means not a single vowel sound that you make. Except that there is the angel that is waiting and ready to jot it down, to write it down. So when we think, oh, you know, I'm, I'm chilling out with my homies, I'm chilling out with my friends, and you know, I can use whatever language I want to use. No, no, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recording every single thing. So we are submitting our deeds to Allah for grading every single day. So when will this happen, that the earth is going to be destroyed and all of creation will be destroyed and will be resurrected. It will be the day on which alimat nafsum ma qaddamat wa akharat. On the day that every single human being, every single person will come to terms face to face with what they submitted forward, i.e. what you and I are currently submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what we left behind. Ayah number six, Allah says, إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدَحًا فَمُلَاقِيهِ Translation, please. You humans toiling uh, laboriously towards your Lord will meet him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدَحًا فَمُلَاقِيهِ Allah is saying, O humankind, Verily, you are struggling towards your Lord with your deeds and your actions. And to Him is surely your return. فَمُلَاقِيهِ <coughs> In Urdu we say mulaqat. Right? To meet someone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you will get to meet your deeds. I will get to meet my deeds. Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الْإِنسَانِ يَا أَيُّهَا الْإِنسَانُ إِنَّكَ كَادِحٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ كَدَحٌ فَمُلَاقِيهِ that, oh, you forgetful human being. Allah didn't say, Ya ayyuhal nas. Use the word, Ya ayyuhal insan, from nisyan. <coughs> meaning, you always have the propensity to forget. And in these days, subhanAllah, life has reached epidemic scales where we forget the car keys, and we forget the cell phone, and we forget the credit card, and we forget the cash, and we forget, 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 forget. Right? And if I don't have my Google AI with me, I don't have Siri to remind me, I don't have Alexa to tell me, and then that's it, you know? I don't have my memory. My memory is just all Allah Mustafa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh, you forgetful human being. Inna ka You are actively engaged in toiling labor. You are actively engaged in hard labor, hard work. And we see a similar meaning in the surah that we will discuss in due course, inshallah, surah Balad, surah number 90. Ayah number four, where Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَ الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ That no doubt about it, we have created the human being in toil. We've created the human being in hardship. Now someone may say, hold on a second, Allah said He created me in hardship? That means there's no chilling for me? Come on, how is this fair? No, Allah is saying that you're not going to get the food come walking and throwing itself and putting itself into your mouth. That's not going to happen. You've got to put in the hard work. You've got to put in the effort. 
and that's when you will get it. So Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ When the Nubuwa was given to our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you should all say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's one of the rights the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has upon every single one of us. So we say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when the Nubuwa, the Prophethood was given to the Prophet, peace be upon him, he comes home to Khadija radiallahu anha, and he says, Oh Khadija, the time for rest is over. And now rest will be in paradise. It's now time to put in the hard work. You want paradise? You want your palaces in paradise? You want Jannah? In this dunya, you understand that I've got to put in the hard work, whether it's some of the most quote-unquote easiest things to do these days, uh, become a blogger and you know, go around different countries and check out the food, the street foods that people are having and, you know, you have a couple million subscribers and you make lots of money. Even in that, there's hard work. That this miskeen, you don't think he's getting diarrhea and he's popping pills all the time? Yes, he is, right? <laughs> or she is. And what happens after that? The drone footage and this footage and the dubbing and all of that, then they come home and then they put in the effects and editing and post-production, name it. And they're putting for every... Uh, uh, five minute of video because I know both how post production works for every five minute of video footage because of the editing and all that work that goes in you're looking at at least an hour or two hours work behind every five minutes that has been produced okay now these is of course uh, as uh, software has become more and more sophisticated uh, the time taken is a lot less but the point being there's still hard work Things are not going to come easy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have certainly created human being into hardship. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you are aiming towards your milestones in life. You have certain career aspirations. You want to do something. You want to achieve that degree. You want to achieve that goal. You want to climb the corporate ladder. You want to get this promotion and that. You have to put in the hard work. Inna takadihun. <coughs> so to every human being, all human beings who are actively toiling. And kadah means to struggle towards something, whether it's good or bad. So struggling is not just in good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the human being is struggling because... Do you have human beings who struggle against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Absolutely. Do you have human beings who struggle against their own selves? Because of the addictions that they have? Because of the... Uh, the the problems that they're facing, challenges, and then to mitigate those challenges instead of going through the proper means, they're going through means that is improper, incorrect, filled with sins, and filled with the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qadih, meaning it is to strive and work hard, laboriously, as the brother mentioned in his translation, either in good or bad. So you are continuously, I am continuously, involved in this struggle in this struggle and where is the struggle gonna end up in ila rabbika towards your master towards your lord famulaqi then on that day no doubt about it you and i are gonna meet who our creator our lord allah subhanahu wa ta'ala another translation or another implication of this ayah can be that you will get to meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you'll get to meet the fruits of your labor. So that labor, if it was good, you will be in delight. You will see the fruits of it. But if that labor was towards evil, then you will see likewise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from evil. Ayah number seven. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِ Mr. Ahna. Translation. Yes, indeed. Translation. It says the translation is Oh oh man, oh oh man, then who then then he who then he who is given his record in his right hand. Absolutely. Okay? So Fa'amma man utiya kitabahu biyamini. As for the person who's giving their record in their right hand. Now, utiya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using the past tense. The one who has been given. And remember, we keep on saying that this is a, uh, a 
recurring theme of the Quran where Allah is talking about something in the future but he uses the past tense in other words it is a done deal so Allah says فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِ for the person who has received his or her record in their right hand past tense is also used to give the notion of certainty that it has happened and it will happen and why right hand why is it why is right hand always the hand of something good why um like you in your like brain you like you basically know the answer but you just don't know how to like explain it that's okay <laughs> you can telepathically explain it to me and i'm gonna get it <laughs> yes so why right hand why not right foot and why not right shoulder why the right hand? Well, we learn from Hadith of Aisha عنها, that whatever noble act the Prophet would do, he would do it with his right hand. Whatever noble act to give something to somebody, he would use the right hand. When taking something from somebody, he would use the right hand. And when eating, the Prophet he would use the right hand. When shaking hands with someone, he used the right hand. Okay? Now I know in many cultures the left hand is used for eating and drinking eating. We should be very, very conscious of this. Okay? Not only is it the practice of the Prophet peace be upon him, but the Prophet ﷺ actually warned and he says that shaitan eats and drinks with the left hand. So when a person engages in eating and drinking with the left hand, then shaitan has a share from it. And we don't want shaitan to have any share from us because he's bent on taking us with him to the fire of hell. We don't want that to happen. So, use your right hand for eating and drinking. Now, what if someone is left-handed? What do you do? You train yourself. There's no excuse, inshallah. You train yourself. <laughs> There's no excuse. Unless it happens forgetfully, and so that's a different thing. But you train yourself to use your right hand. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, would use the left hand for all other things such as hygiene, personal hygiene, cleaning himself, he would use the left hand. So, the right hand is also used to denote agreement. That's why when you sign a contract with your client, what do you do? You put forward your right hand and you say, shake the hands of the person, denoting agreement. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing by giving the record in a person's right hand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already is pleased with such a person and is in agreement with such a person. It is also an expression of power. Also an expression of power. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in other words that the one who is given his record of deeds in his right hand, that he is in a state of power that day. Everyone else is in a state of weakness. By everyone else I mean those who did not get their record in their right hand, they got in their left hand, they are in a state of loss and they're in a state of weakness so what happens then when this person receives his book in his right hand and he receives his book in his right hand he will be overjoyed he will be happy and not just that this person the imagery that we get in surah 69 ayat 19 through 22 beautiful beautiful need to write this reference down surah 69 ayat 19 through 22 surah haqqa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَيَقُولُ فَيَقُولُ هَا أُمُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَا إِنِّي وَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقٍ حِسَابِيَا فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَا فِي جَنَّةٍ عَالِيَا قُطُوفُهَا دَانِيَا كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيئًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this beautiful section of Surah Haqqa that when the person exactly the same phrasing that we see in our Surah of today, Surah in Shaqaq. In Surah Haqqa, that is way before this particular Surah, Allah says the person who gets their book of deeds in their right hand, Ha'um Ha'um is an expression of happiness, is an expression of joy. It is as though a person has gotten an accomplishment 
and they are jumping for joy. They are running around, announcing to everyone. It's kind of like how, during the time of graduation, what happens? Graduation. During the time of graduation, when the diploma is given to a person, they've worked so hard, four or five years in university and college, and today they're getting their diploma. And if they have an amazing GPA, what happens? That they're jumping up and down. Even if a person doesn't have an amazing GPA, they're happy. I graduated, man. I made it. And they're going around showing to people, look at what I got. It's, it's also similar to something we all experienced when we were little kids. Now, when you got that ED, or when you got that nice gift, maybe it was a wristwatch, maybe it was a pair of, you know, jeans or something, and you were so happy you were showing it off to people. So this person is going to be showing off his record of deeds to people around him. Ha um kitabia. He will say, ha um iqra kitabia. He will be telling others, look at my book, look at my book. I'm so happy today. I made it to paradise. Alhamdulillah. All of my hard work paid off. All of those temptations and seductions of this dunya, all of those lusts that people were running after, my classmates were calling me towards, my colleagues were telling me, hey, come on, it's okay, man. You're a Muslim. We're living in 2018, man. Come on, hit the club. It's okay. You said, no, I'm not going to do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for his sake, I'm going to hold myself down. I'm going to lead an ethically upright and morally upright life. I'm going to make the morally correct decisions, no matter how much is against me. And so this person will be paid handsomely on Judgment Day. And he will be jumping around and running around and saying, Ha um iqra'u kitabiya, read my book, read my book. I made it. Inni vanantu anni mulaqin hisabiya. That I had absolutely no doubt that I would be meeting my deeds. I would be meeting my record. I had no doubts whatsoever. And this person shall be in Isha, will be in life that is Radia, that is the most beautiful, that is full of radiance, that is brilliant, that is amazing. In gardens that are exalted, that are way up high. فِي جَنَّةٍ عَالِيَةٍ قُطُوفُهَا دَهَنِيَةٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say قُطُوفُهَا دَهَنِيَةٍ that for you are all types of fruits, all kinds of delights that you wanted. كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيَةً بِمَا أَسْلَفْتُمْ فِي الْأَيَّامِ الْخَالِيَةٍ that eat and drink because of the days of the past that you had put in, today you're going to taste it. Today is the day of recompense. Today is the day of compensation for all the hard work, all of the discipline that you have. It's not easy. Of course it's not easy. Minus 10 degrees, and inshallah ta'ala it'll get better. Minus 39. I remember still, subhanAllah, at Fajr time, you'll be warming your car and the temperature is minus 30, but feels like minus 39. And that feels like is actually the temperature because that's what's biting into your skin. It's hard. It's not easy going to the masjid. It's not easy waking up from fajr or fajr. It's not easy when you have your comforter that's keeping you warm. And at that time, it is the heaviest. It's like, oh my God, 500 pound bench press. My comforter is super heavy. Because you don't want to get out of bed. But you put in that effort. And you wake up. For the sake of Allah and you pray in your room the angels are looking at you or if Allah blesses you to go to the masjid and you put in the effort then subhanallah nurun ala nur even better it's not easy and Allah appreciates that Allah is not gonna forget that and number eight فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا translation please soon will his account be taken by an easy reckoning. So, this ayah, back to this ayah, we've left Surah Haqqa, we're back to this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when a person <coughs> receives their book of records in their right hand, Allahumma ja'alna minhum, may Allah make us all from them. Amen. That this person will have, فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا 
that this person's reckoning and their accounting is going to be easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make it easy for them. So before even entering Jannah, these people are already at ease. Because they haven't entered paradise yet. But the fact that they already got their book in their right hand and they're jumping for joy and announcing to the entire world of the achievements that they've gotten. And they're so incredibly happy, overjoyed, that their ease has already begun. Their ease has already begun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we've seen this in Surah Al-Fatar in the previous ayah, in the previous surah rather, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِينَعِيمُ Who will be these people? They will be from the Abrar, those who are the righteous and the pious. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Mutaffifin, Surah Mutaffifin, Surah 83, ayah number 24, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَجُوهِمْ نَظْرَةَ النَّعِيمُ that upon their faces, you will be able to see the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ease and comfort on their faces. Now, what's interesting is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the second person. This is in Surah Mutafifi. Ta'rifu fi wujuhim nadratan na'im. That you, Ya Rasulullah, will see on their faces ease. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that you will be from those who the Rasul will be personally in, or rather the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa you will be in his company. Because what did Allah say? Ta'arifu fi. You, Ya Rasulullah, will see those who will get their books in their right hand. How amazing. So the man who we thought of so much, the man who we love so much, the man who we send salawat upon, the man who went through so much hardship to deliver the message to us that we love immensely, more than our own selves, that we will get to see him finally. May Allah make us from them. That Allah is saying to the Prophet, peace be upon him, you will see them. So how will the Prophet see them unless the Prophet is in their presence? Yes or no? Unless the Prophet is in their presence. So we see an implication here, and that's the beauty of Tafsir studies, man. But sometimes you read translations, you're just going through it. Okay, you will see them. Okay, who's going to see them? Who is the first recipient of the Quran? Is it Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself? And the reckoning, and with this, inshallah ta'ala, we'll end. Uh, the reckoning and standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that is not easy, people. It's something that the best of the generations before us the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'een, they would tremble in fear when they would think about their hisab. That uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhum would say, I swear by Allah, if on judgment day there was a caller calling out that every person from mankind is going to enter j uh, Jannah except for one person, I would be convinced that that one person who's not going to go into Jannah would be me. This is who? Umar ibn Abdullah. That he would be that scared. He'd be thinking, subhanAllah, I've committed so many sins. I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will envelop me in his mercy. Amen. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu would say that even if one of my feet, one of my feet was in Jannah and the other was outside of it, I would not feel safe that I made it to paradise. Who? Abu Bakr al The one about whom the Prophet وسلم, has so, so, so many ahadith. That the Prophet, peace be upon him, said if you were to put the Iman of Abu Bakr on one side of the scale, and you put the Iman of the entire Ummah on the other side, the Iman of Abu Bakr would outweigh all of them. <laughs> SubhanAllah, what a thing to say. So Abu Bakr's Iman is weightier is heavier in the scales than the Iman of all of the other Sahaba combined, all of the A'imma, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik ibn Anas, Imam Ash-Shafi'i, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, all of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the way from then until our time, until Judgment Day, everybody's Iman on one side and Abu Bakr's Iman on the other, Abu Bakr's would be heavier as well. And this is what Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, would think about. 
and how many are the statements of the Sahaba where they would say, I wish that I was just grass that would be eaten up by livestock that I don't have to be standing in front of Allah to be held to be held accountable for all of the things that I have done. In an authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, and this is something very interesting, where Imam Ahmad, this hadith is reported in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, has a 24-20-something uh, volume compilation of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, called the Musnad of Imam Ahmad. In it, he has a hadith from Aisha radiallahu anha that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever is questioned during the hisab, whoever is questioned during the hisab, then that person will be punished. So Aisha was confused. She asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and said, but didn't Allah say, didn't Allah say, and this is the ayah, that you will surely receive فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا that the person who gets their book in their right hand, and they will receive a reckoning that will be easy for them. The Prophet ﷺ replied, that is not during the reckoning. Rather, it is referring to the presentation of deeds. Whoever is interrogated, whoever is questioned regarding their book of deeds that they have done, then those people will be punished. Now, how do we understand this hadith? What we are to understand is, that it is similar to a student who is a good student in class. So you're in the good books of your teacher. Your teacher knows that you always do your work thoroughly, that your tests, your exams, and everything is always thorough, it's always amazing. So when that comes to you, that student, and you're the teacher, submits that exam to you, or that test to you, and there are little blemishes here and there, the teacher will just say, overlooked, no problem. I'm going to give you an A. But if you already are known to be a troublemaker in class, that you never do your assignments on time, that you never complete your projects, that you always never make deadlines, and now you're submitting your exam, the teacher is going to look at it closely. And for every question, they may write comments. And if you're in front of them, if it's an oral type of exam, they're going to interrogate you. They're going to ask you questions, correct? So that's the same thing. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, that this hisab and yasira is talking about the presentation of deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will overlook it. But if Allah begins to question me and begins to question you about every single thing that you did wrong, then that person will be in trouble. So we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes us from those who will have an easy reckoning. And for that people, you and I have to discipline ourselves. And that is in your own hands, that is in our own hands. Nobody else is going to help us do that except for our own commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How committed am I going to be to this religion? How loyal am I going to be to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Allah has not forced or coerced any single one of us to commit sins. Right? You have some people, you tell them, brother, why don't you pray five times a day? Oh, I'm going to pray if Allah allows me to. If Allah allows you to, so you have the audacity to, to blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you're committing sins, then you don't blame anybody, right? When you're there making up your money and doing whatever you're doing, then you're not blaming anybody. You're giving yourself the credit. It's my hard work that I have, all that I have today. Then Allah is nowhere in the equation. But when you're there to give excuses, then you blame Allah. And this person, deep down, even they know, like the Quran tells us that even they know inside, deep down, that what we're doing is incorrect. That our desires are more pleasing to us than the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our salvation, O people, is in our own hands. In that, we have to put in the effort and keep on asking Allah to ease our path to paradise, to give us the tawfiq, that, oh Allah, I'm trying my best, but sometimes I fail. <coughs> oh Allah, I try my best to pray five times a day, and I hate it that I miss my prayers. Oh Allah, help me in this. 
Oh Allah, I have addictions of looking at filth online. Oh Allah, it eats at me. No matter how many showers I take, no matter what I do, it's never going to wash away that guilty conscience, that evil, that, that, that filth I feel inside in a spiritual manner. Oh Allah, help me with this. If you are sincere, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to your aid. And Allah is not a vengeful God. Allah is an all-merciful God. But you and I must take the first step. And then only will we have our hisab that will be yaseer. May Allah make us from those who have an easy reckoning in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah ta'ala. We'll continue next week. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. If there are any questions related to the topic or unrelated, now is a chance for you to ask. Yes, brother, just to say that I can't hear you. Uh, you said that the record to be given in the right hand for the people who are successful. Make it easy. Now, because the right hand, you say that because this is a good thing, that's what someone used to do for eating or whatever. And you say that he has forbidden us to eat and drink on the left hand. Now, uh, we often see that um, when we're eating something, our hands are exactly it's greasy because of this. Uh, in a biryani or whatever, yes. all these things. Yes. Yes. And that time, people take the left hand, put a hand underneath the yes. right hand. Yeah. Yeah. So in order to make it, you know, connections, kind of like, to make the connection, and yeah. then they support it. So you guys are all seeing the question the brother is asking. And yes. sometimes yes. putting a finger there, okay, fine. Uh, even the finger, though. Wow, <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen this finger <laughs> in this yes. business. Yes. Masha Allah, okay. that is so innovative, man. Masha Allah. Apple and Microsoft can hire such a person. <laughs> okay, so um, what is the response to this? The response is yes, none of this is correct. Uh, if our hands are greasy, subhanAllah, we live in a society where Kleenex and napkins and all of these things are in abundance. So the right adab to have is to wipe your hand. If you're eating biryani or you're eating anything, wipe your hand clean and pick up that vessel of water and drink with your right hand doing this while drinking or doing this or you know doing god knows all kinds of you know gymnastics with that it's not gonna work no it's not right so it's better that you wipe your hands or well, have a little bit of patience inshallah you don't need to gulp down that drink during food itself when your hands are greasy so finish up the food wash your hands inshallah and then take it now of course it's a different issue altogether if someone is dying of thirst no, Brother Shuaib said, you know what, I really can't have it, so I'm going to die and, you know, CPR and call 911. Please don't do that. <laughs> That's understood. Okay. So, uh, if it's a dire situation, someone is choking and, you know, they've eaten some amazing uh, pepper and they need 